but first three school employees charged in the death of a special needs student. As we're learning, one has still been teaching at a nearby school and why some are defending them tonight. That's where we start tonight. The three school employees charged in the death of a special needs student say they're not guilty. Yeah, the teen who had autism died last year after being physically restrained at Guiding Hands School. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tony Lopez. And I'm Sharon Roger. Tonight we're learning one of the teachers has been working at another school nearby. But first, CBS 13's Renee Santos is live outside the courthouse where the woman faced a judge for the first time today. Renee. One of the defendants in court became emotional. She became she be, she started fanning her face. The mother of Max also emotional in court today. It's been nearly a year since she lost her son. There were signs of support outside court today for the former Guiding Hand School employees blamed for the death of 13-year-old Max Benson. The three women, Kimberly Woolwin, Cindy Keller, and Starren Myers, appearing in court for the first time in front of Max's family, each pleading not guilty to the involuntary manslaughter charges they face in connection to Max's death. People who knew the defendant say it's been hard. They're broken. As they should be, and they were also very distraught over Max's passing. Last November, Max, who had autism, was reportedly physically restrained at the school. He stopped breathing and died two days later. Kyle McCoy is a former guiding hand special education teacher. We were using restraints that were approved by state. We had gone through numerous extensive trainings on how to use those restraints. None of the defendants talked after court today, but an attorney for Keller and Myers did. It is always a tragedy when there is a loss of life, especially such a young life and a student. These two women have dedicated literally their entire lives to helping educating, encouraging, and working with special needs students. The judge giving them each pretrial release conditions, stating each must show up to later court proceedings, cannot leave the state, and must not engage in teaching or daycare services. The family of Max not saying a word, holding hands as they left the building, still healing over the loss of Max. Now, we did ask the district attorney for a comment, but we were told not at this time. The defendants are expected to appear back in court in January.